Hello folks, today we're going to talk about adding a downfeed attachment to our Voyager drill press to give it the same milling capabilities as the Vulcan. Here's how it came from Nova, part number 83820. I'm going to move in closer and show you exactly how it came. Instruction manual, downfeed hand wheel, fairly nice Allen wrench, Some hardware, M6 screws, an M5 screw and a washer for the hand wheel. That special custom tool that I was talking about in part one to retain the spring and let it uncoil safely. And then the entire downfeed assembly, which consists of two pieces Let's go over the tools and items that you will need to complete the installation. The original downfeed shaft with the handlebars removed. As you can see, I upgraded the original knobs with a much nicer, more familiar bowl style. And I will put the exact item number in the description. Flat pliers wrench, number two Phillips screwdriver, six and five millimeter Allen hex keys, six and five millimeter drill bits, I'm using stubbies. The drill guide is optional. Six millimeter tap, tap wrench, metric tap guide that includes five and six millimeters holes, calipers, a piece of aluminum or mild steel stock, three inches by two and a half inches, half inch thick or thicker, a couple of M6 25 millimeter screws, for temporary work holding, combination square, a mallet or a dead blow, and a clamp with a five inch or larger opening. Duster or shop air, and a drill. Once you go ahead and remove the original down feed shaft and the retaining spring, which I demonstrated in my previous video, there will be a few things to take care of. First one, is the M5 captive screw for this V-groove was projecting outside of the pillar so much that it wouldn't clear the plane of the down feed assembly. So I had to put it on a lathe and shorten it down. You can also just simply file it down to the point where in its fully tightened state it will clear the plane of the down feed assembly. Once you remove the down feed shaft that you already have on your Voyager, you are going to expose the part of the casting that can go a couple of different ways depending on um, how old your Voyager is. It may already have the holes that I'm going to talk about um, on it uh, and if you have an older version it won't like in my case. I had to come up with a quick way of being able to drill these holes uh, fairly precisely and I didn't want to take the head off the drill press to put it into my mill because uh, that would create a mess. Drill press head weighs about 200 pounds and uh, I didn't want to expose it to the coolant, etc, etc. So I had to do it in place. So with a little bit of trickery that you're going to see, um, I was able to do it uh, fairly easily. Your casting might come with the pre-drilled M5 holes that are threaded and a blind hole for the M6 pin. Mine did not. So this is where the aluminum block comes in. I had to mill a boss with the OD matching the ID of this hole. Two five millimeters holes that I tapped with the six millimeter tap and a six millimeter through hole. These are 46 millimeters apart or 23 millimeters from the center of the boss and the one above is also 23 millimeters from the center of the boss at a 90 degree angle. Then you simply fit it into the hole and clamp it down. After you're satisfied with its squareness, using five millimeter drill bits, you drill the holes into the casting 5 eighths of an inch deep, 625 thousandths. Then using the six millimeter drill bit, you drill half inch to five eighths 
of an inch into the casting using this block as a guide. Once those holes are drilled, remove the block, clear all the chips out of the holes and mount the block back on. Then you can tap these two holes with the six millimeter tap using a tap guide. Being extra careful, it's cast iron and you only have one chance to do it right. Clear the chip side of every hole using shop air or air duster. Of course, wearing eye protection. The next item is take the downfit assembly case with the shaft removed. Put your temporary M6 screws through the side holes and install the six millimeter pin. Then simply match this portion of the assembly with the pin in the hole and tighten up the screws. I'm using these temporary screws because I don't want to wear the original ones too much by putting them in and out as I'm doing the fitting. This is your one chance to um, align this portion of the assembly, rotating it around the pin. Uh, do it visually in a fashion where the ID of the casting roughly matches the um, ID of this case. Once you're satisfied with the alignment of the casing, put the new downfit shaft with the worm gear all the way in. Make sure that rotating the, the dial rotates this part of the assembly. And once you tighten this shaft all the way, rotating this dial engages this entire portion of the assembly. At this point, you can remove the downfeed shaft and replace the temporary hardware one at a time. Very important with the permanent hardware with thread lock. Reinstall the downfeed shaft and make sure that you're still able to rotate the fine graduation knob, bring the quill and spindle assembly up and down uh, effortlessly. Bring the quill and spindle assembly all the way up and reinstall the spring using the, the tool that came with the downfeed assembly. Make sure that when you put the spring onto this slitted rod, you account for the fact that the spring will have to be wound counterclockwise approximately three quarters of the way. Tighten the screw underneath. And reinstall the nuts and adjust the tension on the spring using the technique that I showed in my previous video. And you can go ahead and finish installing all three handles. Tighten them up by hand. Oh, now with the pliers wrench, they have the flats. Once the tension on the spring is adjusted in a way where it fully returns the quill spindle assembly back into fully retracted position, you can go ahead and install the, the hand wheel. The one that came with it uh, is pretty light looking, so I'm definitely gonna be replacing it with the uh, more decent quality cast iron one. Tighten this knob all the way to put the down feed assembly in the so-called precise mode. Make sure that it operates correctly. As you can see, the spring is unable to retract the quill spindle assembly. So it gets stopped in a precise position ready for milling. Now let's talk about the tapers. The original spindle side taper was Morse taper number two. And the drill chuck taper was popular European B16. The new one, the spindle side, is Morse taper number three. And the drill chuck side is Jacob's taper 33, so 33 JT. Despite looking remarkably similar to the naked eye, they're definitely not the same. 
So don't make the mistake of fitting the wrong chuck onto the wrong taper. It's not going to run true. The key size is K3, both on the old B16 chuck and on the new 33 Jacobs taper chuck. I got a nicer key with the handle, I like that. My new chuck is gonna be a combination, uh, manual and keyed. Before you install the chuck into the spindle, make sure that the jaws are retracted below the surface so you won't damage them. I simply align the taper in its uppermost position and tap it with the raw hide mallet or a dead blow once and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the uh, comments section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There's a lot more exciting stuff coming up.